Good morning. Good morning. What is today? Communion. What are we celebrating today? Okay. Without Jesus Christ, there is no life. There's no reason for you to live. There is a need. So when we celebrate communion, we celebrate so much more. There's so much more that you should be thinking about today. Yeah. It shouldn't be about some dopey football game later. <laughs> <laughs> really? Amen. Amen. Really? Because you know what? It can be the greatest football game a man's eyes ever played, and it's not going to affect your life one second. It shouldn't affect you for a minute. Nothing. It shouldn't even be a thought process. Because that doesn't alter your life. He does. That will not save you. He does. So when you blow, the, we blow these shafars today, when they go off, you think about what you're really here for today. It isn't to run out the door when you clock me how long I talk. Because I don't do any talking on Sunday. God does. I checked with him this morning. He says, you got nothing to say and I got a lot to say. So, my words mean nothing. His words mean everything. But his words are life. That's what we're celebrating today. Amen. The life of Jesus Christ. The one who emptied himself and came here and walked this earth sinless and perfect and holy and righteous and freely put the cross before him. That's what we're here to celebrate today. That should be your thought process. That should be your thought process every morning. Because without the blood of the new covenant, you're going to find out what that power really gives you today, that new covenant. And how powerful we always think of the blood. Oh, I became born again. Da, 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 da. No, there's so much more. The power that blood gives to you to make you into the vessel God can use for His glory. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You Okay. Yes, Lord. Father, we come before you this morning. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for sending your Son to redeem us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, as we celebrate the communion, the blood of the new covenant. Lord God, we just bless you and thank you that we are washed in that blood. We are sealed with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for another awesome day, because each day is made new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. Lord Jesus, fill this place with the Father's glory today. With the divine holy presence, O oh God. Come and consume us with your life today, O oh God. Consume this valley with your life, O oh God. And this country, O oh God. Father, we just thank you for the conviction of a holy, righteous God fallen on America to bring us to our knees, to bring us to godly sorrow and true repentance so we will turn from our ways, turn back to you, and you will heal the people, you will heal the land, and you will restore us as one nation under God. Father, we just invite you in here in all your power, all your love and mercy and kindness and grace. We thank you the Holy Spirit just flood us, God. Refresh us, O oh God. And everything we've been through this week be washed away right now in Jesus' name. Father, we dedicate this time to you, the worship music, the preaching of the word, the time of fellowship. We just dedicate it to the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's about the name of Jesus and about nothing else in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing. It may be Super Bowl Sunday. But I told my wife the other day, I'm so sick of hearing how great these people are. They throw a football. They tackle. They make a lot of money. The last time I checked, which was early this morning, there's only one great one. His name is Jesus. There's no such thing as a great human being. There isn't one. Anybody ever tells you you're going to be a great vessel? Rebuke them. It caused me a broken back as a young Christian. Don't listen to it. Because I actually thought I was going to be great someday. I didn't realize I had to come very small and very weak. 
so he could do great things with me. See, so don't ever listen to what's going on in this world today. The less you listen to the world, the more you listen to God, the more you will be like Him. The more you will speak like Him, the more you will walk and talk like Him. Because when you find out what the blood of Jesus Christ really does for you today, if it doesn't change your heart today, we will check you for a pulse. Amen? Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It is so important that this year, God's put out a lot of warnings in this ministry in the past year. This year, take your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ so serious. Let nothing else hinder you. Let nothing else hold you back. Let nothing else oppress you. Don't let anything even come between you and Jesus. Don't. Don't. Because if you do, you're going to miss out on what God has for you. You're going to miss out on the blessings from heaven that only come from Him. Because remember something, every gift from heaven is good and perfect. If it's not a good and perfect gift and doesn't enrich your walk with Christ, it didn't come from Him. It came from man. You better watch out because the devil can bless you to keep you from Jesus. Because then you'll all get caught up in things and, <clears throat> excuse me, and possessions. And you'll think it's all. God has so much more for me than what this world could give me because I checked this morning with that too. He owns everything. And if He wants to bless me with something that I need that's going to glorify Him, my arms are open. Because I want everything He's got. And I want every blessing that He has for all of you. But you've got to know who you are. You've got to know what the blood really gives you. And the authority it gives you as a child of God. Thank you, oh, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Our Friday nights have gone through so many different swings. Okay? Friday nights are for you to come to worship and to seek Jesus. If you're coming because you just need a place to go, I'll put some chairs outside. Because you came for the wrong reason. Friday nights are for us to enter in. The ladies come in here. They're here early. They practice. They worship for an hour. That sets the tone of saying, Jesus, come. We seek your face. Friday nights are for seeking God's face. Seeking His will for your lives and what He's going to do with all of us as the body of Christ. So I'm just letting you know, it's been on me all weekend, that we really have to come back to Friday nights. They're here practicing their songs for Sunday, but what that does is that brings God's presence in here because we've already been worshiping God for an hour before you even get here. So when you come here on Friday nights, you should have a desire to seek Him. Not a ministry, not a place, but a place where you come get quiet and worship your God. Because that's what Friday nights are for. Because when we come in and we enter in on Friday, that's going to take right through to Sunday. So by the time Sunday's over, you're so filled with Jesus, this week won't even touch you. That's right. Yeah, it won't touch you. Because you've entered into a most holy presence of a most holy God who loves us more than we can even imagine. Things are going to change in your life if you allow God to change you. David and I were talking before lots of people got here today. So this week as I was being crushed more, you don't realize what's still in there. Okay? So what I asked him, I says, well, how come now? He says, because now you let me. The grace was on that stuff. It wasn't completely gone yet. But now you said you don't want anything that's of you in there. You want me to replace that. Now you've allowed me. Now the crushing isn't so brutal. Now when it starts, does it hurt a little bit? Yeah, because you think you already got someplace. I didn't get there yet. Paul never got there. Do you realize that? He said, I haven't attained it yet. So his desire each day was to be more Christ-like, more Christ-centered, more of the knowledge and power and the wisdom of Almighty God that lives within him. It's a day-by-day-by-day by day, by day journey. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know, let's get down to the important things. Potluck is the 16th. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know you all too well, okay? You mentioned food here, and all of a sudden it becomes a weight. As you get ready to take communion today, this is so... What we do on Communion Sunday, I was up here praying, I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to say? 
And he turned me to Micah 6.8. I'm going, huh? Usually it's always out of the New Testament. Okay. Micah 6.8 says, What does the Lord require of all of you, O man, but to do justly, to love kindness, to walk humbly with your God? Oh, yeah. If you're not walking humbly with your God, that means you're taking communion in an unholy manner. Because that means you're here for you and not for Jesus. You're not here to worship the one that saved you, delivered you, redeemed you. It's amazing. We preached on our Redeemer lives last week. All of a sudden this week on Cyrus Radio, I've heard my Redeemer like 20 times. <laughs> but you see how God confirms in us who He is? He gives me a message. I had a message Wednesday night. Got up Thursday morning. Got my 20 minutes of news after praying and reading. I want to shut the TV off because that's as much as I can handle. No, click the channel. Creflo Dollar was on. Everything I said Wednesday night came out of his mouth. I said, oh, I did hear clearly. Okay. He's confirmed all the messages lately in so many different ways. He speaks to us in different ways, whether it's through a song, a minister on TV, a brother or sister in Christ. So remember something. You may say something to somebody, though, what am I saying that for? But those words you give them may touch their heart in a way that says, wow, I didn't hear from God. You won't know why, but they will. So even though it may sound strange to you, it's not strange to that person, because if you feel something in your spirit, it didn't come from your head but your heart, the Spirit said, give them this word, you're going to go, huh? I've done that. Like, what and why? Don't ask why. Do. And you know what? Every time it blessed that person. <coughs> so whatever they were going through, the words I gave them, they were from him, not from me, because he knew right where they were, and they, he knew they needed those words. <coughs> so don't try and figure the words out. Give them, because you just may have helped set somebody free. You may have gotten them right back on track with Jesus. They may have had some real negative, ungodly thoughts because they thought they were deceived and didn't hear clearly from God, when yes, they did. So what's strange to you is love and grace and peace and mercy from Jesus to somebody. So as we take communion today, have a humble heart before God. Because we celebrate this blood today. We're going to talk about it. The blood of the new covenant. Because without it, without the new covenant, there is no power in the word. You have no power to walk holy. You have nothing without the blood of the new covenant. There is no life outside of that. There is no access into the throne room of God. There is none without what we're partaking of today. That's the, this is so important. It is so holy what we're doing. That's why we must have a humble heart before Him when we partake of this today. Some of you, if you have concerns, he just showed me. The 
one who can take all them away from you right now is the one you're about to partake of. And you give your concerns to Jesus right here, right now, before you partake of communion. And he will take them from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. sinful people, O oh God. Your loving kindness, your understanding, compassion, and mercy on humanity, it never ceases to amaze us, Lord. It just shows the power of your love for all of us. Because when we lift up this bread, the living bread, the bread of life, because this is alive, and you are alive forevermore, O oh God. You have always been alive. You've always been God. You'll always be God. You were God before it began. You've been God all through history, and you'll be God when it's all over. Yes. So, Lord, this is the living bread that brings healing and nourishment, spirit, soul, heart, mind, and body. So when we put this living bread in us today, O oh God, let us always give you thanks, O oh God, what this truly represents. The life of your Son, Father. The broken body on that cross. But it wasn't broken just because it was broken so by His stripes we can be healed and made whole. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank You. We praise You. Lord, put it in every heart here today to always put this in remembrance. And never take communion in an unholy way with a humble heart. Knowing God, we didn't do anything to earn this. You freely gave us Your broken body, Lord Jesus. So let this bread bring healing and nourishment to everyone in this house today, Father, in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Lord, I lift up the blood of the new covenant. What a day to speak on your blood and the power of it as we celebrate the eternal blood that cleanses us day in and day out. Not just for our past sins, but the ones when we're going to fall short in the future. And when we come back to you, this blood makes us as white as snow. Every time we come to you and say, Lord, forgive me. I've sinned against you. Oh God, we thank you for the power of this blood. Not only does it wash us, it protects us. It empowers us to come to you, Father, because when he said it is finished and shed his blood, it opened up heaven. Eternal glory for us to come and enter in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we can come to you, O oh God. And you'll never reject us, O oh God, because we are washed. We are as white as snow. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the holy blood that you poured out on the ground and on that cross that day. It is holy blood that we speak of, O oh God, with no impurities. And Father, we just give you praise and honor and glory. <clears throat> Let us never forget the power of the blood of this cup. In Jesus' name. 